And we are live. Valerie, welcome, welcome, welcome. How hello, are you? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. I want you to introduce yourself to the guys at home, but before we do that, I just want to say that I'm extremely happy to have you here. When I started this podcast, I wanted to be a conversation with creators about photography or different art forms and kind of dealing with different, I would say, struggles that a lot of people have. And then when you and I sat together, we're going to talk about it in a bit as well, we kind of figured out that you're going through something very, very important that most artists go through, especially when they just start off following their dreams and hopes and inspiration in the real world, turning it to from a love and passion of a hobby of loving photography into a full-time occupation. So before we begin and you kind of talk about this topic with you today, I want people to know who, at home who haven't seen your work either on Instagram or Facebook or your website, can you very shortly introduce yourself and then we get right into it? Okay, so my name is Valerie, I live in Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm into photography for 10, 15 years now. Um, but it all I always kept it as a hobby, something that amateur level and uh, was working a um, full time day job. Now I decided that it's enough for me. I need to do something else. And I decided to try to take my photography to another level to make it more professional and to earn money out of it. Basically, turn your, your love and passion to photography into money making business, business and also making a living out of something you love yes. and passionate about this and that's is, a scary idea yeah that is a scary move to do it is it's how do you feel about it um like it was it, it didn't happen in one day it was like a huge process that i went through can, can you take us through that process because i i known you i feel for about a year and a half now but we haven't been real you know con every week talking or some of this yeah. so i remember i met you about a year ago maybe slightly more even and I was uh, completely taken by your ability to take portraits of people. For people at home who haven't checked her Instagram yet or website, you have links in the blog post below. Uh, one of the things that Valerie is doing amazing is that she takes people who aren't professional models and create really beautiful, scenic images with them. And I was always taken by it because I really think that different photographers have different skill sets, different abilities, and you have, a, you have a very good eye and talent for both recognizing talent, people who are going to be very photogenic and good with your work, and also really cool aesthetic in your portraits. So when you talked to me about a month ago about you turning pro soon, I was ex extremely excited about it, but I was also kind of interested to see what were your plans into it, how you're going to get into it. So if you can kind of introduce to us quickly the transition phase you came, like how you got into photography and what made you recently change your mind into turning it into an occupation rather mm. than a hobby. Yeah. So it's a long way. So I've started photography like when I was, I don't know, 15 years old. It was just something fun to do. I had this Olympus film camera and I was excited that I like can do something with that. And um, starting to take out the pictures went through all this photography stage, you know, when you shoot your friends, flowers, kittens and all this stuff. The golden ages of yeah, cats yeah. and flowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have like amazing pictures of that. And, <laughs> and when you like, Slowly but surely, you keep it as a hobby. You go through different stuff. You learn more. You get excited more about photography. You feel that you want to learn more and to do more. But, but at the same time, I was doing all the social stuff, like all the social duties as a person. So I went like university and army and all this background thing. I was considering to become a photo photographer professional several times, but it never went till the end. It never, I've never took it seriously till the end. What, what kind of stuff were you considering back in the day? I was considering to be a photographer in the army. I even went to chief of the um, photography apartment, department in the, in the army. Right, but, the they, but, but they turned me around because I was like very young, very insecure and very like very amateur, very like basic level um, of photography. So th they definitely just said no. Just so go, we're talking, go home. We're talking about roughly the time age of being 18 to 20. Yes. Kind of. uh, it's like I just kept it as a hobby, as most of the people that photography is their hobby. So, you know, you take photos of your friends here and there. You when you take photos when you go on vacations and in some interesting places and stuff like this. Um, and recent years, I've started to take more. I started to do more projects and to take more like more serious photo shoots kind of and slowly I started to fail started to feel that it's not enough for me and I started to feel that my day job doesn't make me happy kind of like I started to feel 
that I'm sitting in the office like this nine hours a day and I'm thinking about photography. I'm thinking what I need to do next, what I, what the photo, what light I should use, who I should shoot. You got obsessed with the craft kind of thing. Yeah. So, so you, what you want to say is that basically you started doing a different office work. I don't know, what was it? Uh, what kind of office work did you do? I worked in an IT company. I do quality insurance for uh, programmers. Oh, that sounds like the most exciting job in the world. But yeah, no. it, it, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't like to talk dirty about it. Oh, I don't think it's a dirty, <laughs> I mean, a job is a job for sure. But, yeah. but I find it really interesting because what you're saying is that you started photography as your passion, as your love, something yes. you just enjoy doing. Yeah. And over the years, you got to do your own projects, stuff, your own initiatives, your own kind of setups and, and productions. Mm -hmm. And then what you're describing is that while you're in the office doing your day job, what's supposed to be a yeah, big this part was of your like life. a break point for me when I started to think about it. Like maybe maybe I should do something else because when you sit in and you try to do your job, like it's like the most the like the bigger part of your day, mm -hmm. and you're trying to concentrate on something, and I just catch myself that I'm thinking about something else, and I want I'm waiting for this moment when I can go home and uh, to take photos or to like arrange something for that. I started to think maybe I should I should, I should consider to switch and to try myself uh, in different field. Oh, that sounds that sounds really interesting. So basically, in a sense, your daydreaming got you to a point where you're like maybe I should pursue this yeah. more professionally. I was kind of like very. I was waking up before like every day going was I just didn't want to wake up and just didn't want to go there. Kind you're of like yeah, I, I took myself to the very extreme point when I was kind of suffering going to the office. You know to telling myself that it's okay, like just, just, you just try. To, yeah. So basically you're going on a limb here. You're going doing the jump from having a secure air con air conditioning office work yeah. to just trying it out, basically going full in on becoming a freelance photographer. And I think a lot of people who are listening to this podcast are in the same kind of stage, not in terms of necessarily want to drop their office work and become photographers, but kind of should we do it? Should we pursue it? Kind of considering whether or not photography can be an actual occupation for them. And we can talk about that, I think, slightly later on in this podcast. But what I'm actually interested to hear first from you is how do you manage the doubts? So, as I said, I, I was considering to become a photographer, like I'm a photographer for years. So somehow, if you are in photography, you consider here and there, maybe I should do it full time. You know, like you, you see yourself looking at your photos like, oh, this is a nice, mm. nice shot. Maybe I should do it full time. Maybe I should charge money for that. So, but always, but the difference between now and then, that I, then I always had this huge list, why not? Why not to do it? Why not to a bunch become, of reasons. Yeah, yeah, like why not to become a professional photographer? And I always had a good reasons for me. Then why not to do that? Like what? What, what, what were the things you think you felt like were stopping you in the past? Okay. And now you find your way ar across. Mm, there were many. <laughs> they slightly went down. All of them. Uh, for like, for example, that I'm not doing enough. I'm like I always had like this feeling maybe I'm not good enough to make this like something profession that I can do it for money then I get actually money for that mm. it's it's something that to talk about my insecurities and not actually about the outcome of my uh, photography but it's something that that you you think about it well when you want to switch your profession you you ask yourself if I will be good enough in that if if it's like it's, it's worth it maybe I'm not good at it why should I do that yeah like having that barrier of self-doubt yeah like, can i make it can i can i keep the deadlines can i make the product quality enough yes that's true yeah. it's something that you think about it um and you also the financial insecurity is something that you 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 have your day job you your life is kind of very constructed and very clear for you 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 know what you do next you know where your paycheck is it's everything is very clear someone is taking care of all when the, you have the office work yeah something someone is very care take care of you about everything that's like financial financial stuff. The only thing you need to do, you need to come to office nine hours a day and go back home. Next day, you do the same, but you will get your paycheck at the end of the day, right? So this is another thing that you should consider. Um, and I think that's a very big fear. I mean, most of my friends who either play with the area of being freelancers, one of the biggest fears, one of the biggest scares is the fact that there is no, there is no security. Yes. You can be uh, and then getting really good well-paying gigs you know like you, you earn really well on january and then february march april you have nothing yeah and it's scary it's something to manage and a lot of people the reason they drop off or out of uh being freelancers that's actually the the problem right they want to be more secure they want to make sure they get their 
uh, salary in or they can make sure they can get their rent. And when you're a freelancer, I think it's a big scare. And it's, a, it's, a, it's something that you should consider, it's something that you need kind of overcome kind of thing. You should, mm. you should take this risk because you're taking a risk because it's, it's, it's not now no other word to describe. You're taking a risk. Yeah. Especially like I, I, I'm, I don't have family stuff to support with money, so it's easier for me. People that with families and children, it's much more complicated than that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's something very crucial for people to understand about home. There is no way to make this transition to becoming a freelancer, especially in the beginning, without risk, yeah. without fear. People think, oh, it's so easy, that's the only way to do it, or, oh, no worries, you knew you'll get another money from it, or you'll earn properly. No, you don't. You have it's, it's no so, it, clue. It, it sounds good, but it, in, in, when, when you see it at home, when, like all the excitement of, oh, I'm going to be a freelancer, I'm going to be a photographer, like Vogue is waiting for me, and no. And you will find yourself sitting at home alone without a job, and you should like to do something with yourself yeah, and you, and by you, your own to bring people to pay you money for what you do. Absolutely, and, that, and that's scary. But the thing about what you said, and I think it's very important for people who are listening to this or might have the same kind of struggle, saying, you know, I want to, turn, I want to chase photography as a profession, or at least even if as a side job, right? And they kind of, one of the big stoppages are, I don't know if I am good enough. I don't know if I'll earn enough to sustain myself yep. through the first few years. And the answer is usually no, you can't. The answer is usually, you know, you'll, you'll get yourself around after the second, third or fourth year of doing it. That's, I think that's the statistics of most businesses. Most businesses, small businesses who open, I think 90% of them close on the first year. Mm. And out of the 10% who make it to the first one, half of them close within the second. But if you pass that magical mark of the two years, you actually find yourself balanced. And what you said uh, before in your answer, it was exactly right. Uh, there is a guy I really like, his name is John Rogan, and he actually is one of the inspiration for this podcast because he has an amazing uh, podcast called The Joe Rogan Experience. Yeah, I know, I, highly I know, people, yeah, 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 I know. It's I know. a great one, I highly, people I highly recommend people to check it out, of course, after finishing this podcast. But one of the things he talked about when he was starting his career as a stand-up comedian and so forth is that one of the things that allowed him to overcome that fear of providing Right, whether it be paying rent or paying for kids or so forth, was the fact that he was in his early 20s and he didn't have any commitments. Yeah. When I first started, this is one of the most powerful things I had on my side. I, didn't, I had no commitments. It's definitely an advantage. Exactly, so you can take the risk. You can you know, say, yes. okay, for the first few months or year even, maybe I don't live in my own place. Right? Maybe I don't ha own a car. Maybe I don't go out to eat. Maybe I have to stay away in my parents' house or something like this. But you kind of push your way through the first few years. And there's like a, a very important I said mark line or t mm. deadline where you have to cross in order to actually go to the point where you earn money from yeah. photography. And h how are you planning to kind of cope with that? I think the biggest, the biggest um, thing in that, in any freelancer, um, not only photographer, it's the talent not to give up. I think that's the main thing. It doesn't, it, nothing have to do with your photography ability, if you're good or not good, it's like, like you never know. You never know if you found your niche, and it, no, no one can really tell if you do not. It's something very uh, vague. It's hard. This is this is some, I think this is the hardest thing because in the beginning nothing goes smooth. Nothing. You have no idea what you're doing. You just kind of check in this, check in. You're starting to work with clients. You're starting to understand what what it's to be a professional photographer. What it takes from you, how money, time. And the main issue is not to give up, I think. It's for me, when I decided that I'll go to be a photographer, like professional photographer, trying to be, it's when there this why not list that I had before, it doesn't matter anymore. It's kind of, I've stopped ask myself questions kind of thing. There is no question for me, should I be, should I try or should I should not? Um, my photography is good enough or it's not good enough will I earn money or I will not earn money it doesn't matter anymore there is like there is no goal there is like the process that I want to go through I find it super interesting that you start off like this I mean at the end of the day you have been dealing with photography for a while but you are now just starting the idea of making a living out of it and I think that that borderline mixture of grit you know the, the desire to keep going to fall and keep going keep going and absolute blind stupidity is a key feature in succeeding as a freelancer, right? Because first of all, when you go into a business, especially a business you you know as a hobby, I mean, you, I know how to do photography, I always knew when I used it a hobby, but doing photography for fun and doing photography for a client yeah, or for a potential world. business, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. 
And I think the main key is exactly what you said. You have to be willing to do it, right? Take that risk. And also be more than willing and ready to fail. Because, because like, because a failure, is not, there is no goal. Like when, when I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a photographer, there is no goal to be a professional photographer because there is no point in your life when you sit in your head like, ooh, I'm like now. This yeah, there's is the no mo- magic moment yeah, where you get like, that crown. Yeah. This is the moment like now, like like the plows the, the, and lights and everything. No, they will not be like that. It's, kind of, it's a process. You have to enjoy the process. It doesn't me it doesn't it doesn't matter the outcome of course i mean I, what i want to say and i think that's uh, i think more potent on in terms of not giving up is that when you do your own photography when you become a freelance photographer when you turn pro let's put it this way um a lot of times what will get you your next job would be your own projects you yes. know you do your own initiative uh, in my yeah. case would be a more documentary project in your case, I don't know, again, again, we're going to talk about it in a bit, I guess, what kind of photography you're planning to go into and how yeah. you're planning to do that. But I do find a lot that you do your own thing. First of all, that's how you start. Yes, people, definitely. People won't invest in you until they know you can actually give definitely. what they want, right? They, 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 need to, they need to see you're working. It exactly. doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what you're doing. The people, like, when people look at your, uh, look at your photography, look at it, they want to see a lot of stuff and they want to see that you're actually working that yeah. you're actually doing that and not just like sitting oh maybe i'll do a photo shoot like let's do a photo shoot you have to you do it consistently it's the this is the main thing that you like if, if you're going to be a photographer this is what you do you do yeah. photography all the time it doesn't matter if it's for your client if for yourself if it's for your mom it's, it doesn't matter when and how you just do photography for sure and, and again like the same way you go to a restaurant you don't want to be the the the, the sh- you don't want to get to a restaurant where the chef this is the first time they ever cooked. Yeah, you want to have that credential, right? They do this menu. They've been going here for twenty years. It can or be so. a nice concept, but, but, but yeah, that would be like yeah, nice try out for chefs. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> but again, for photographers when they want to start out, uh, I think one of one of the biggest misconceptions is that they go like, okay, I want to become a professional photographer. I'm going to find somebody to pay me to learn to become a photographer. Well, a lot of time we're clients, whether that be National Geographic or a magazine editor or even a, just you know a fashion designer who needs a collection of his clothes when they're going to pick you as a potential photographer they're not going to say okay i think he can be a good photographer they actually want to see your portfolio yeah they want to see you manage this environment and you actually are capable of doing this job yeah so the the, the interesting thing that we, we talked about it before we started the, um that the, the difference between amateur and professional photographer right so wh- where is where is the different the difference um when you looking when you start a professional career in photography, you have to be the whole thing. What I mean by that that you are you, you have to like when people comes to you, they want to see the fine res, like the the final result. What they can get can what do. what they can get out of you. Mm-hmm. They need to see the final result. So what it means for you as a photographer, you have to do project from the beginning till the end. Need to be be able to. Yeah. You know, that actually goes to even a longer extreme when it comes to documentary photography, for example. Because nowadays, most people think, you know, if I'm a good documentary and I get, I made like a bunch of really cool photos on my trip to Bhutan or to Vietnam or so forth, then a magazine might like my portraits and then hire me for an assignment. Most magazines today, and I'm talking about 99%, including National Geographic, for example, they don't send photographers on assignments anymore. The photographer is actually inventing his own assignment going out on his own risk, his own money, his own in- intuition, creates a series of images, writes a bloody article, yeah. and then the magazine basically buys the ready, already edited and marketed they, they, they article can, from him. They can afford it because it, they are National Geographic, so they know people want to be in yeah. their magazine. Oh, no, I'm talking also about places like Times, The Guardian, so forth. But, but so you name the big, the, you know, be, be, the big magazine. Yeah, yeah, the big magazine. And what they do is basically they go like, okay, we have a magazine who is, let's say, 100 pages. We need to fill up page 47 we need a one page article and then they go through different photo agencies or photographers they like and they literally purchase one of their projects so when you say about clients want to actually see you can you are, you can are capable of managing this environment sometimes it goes to the extreme of the client actually wants you to do the assignment and then pay you retroactively yeah uh, i think it's that's something more on in documentary world but takeaway from this conversation so far is that 
many, many times, if you want to do a certain job, you need to prove to your potential clients yes, that you're actually capable of doing it. And yeah. it's a very important stage because yeah. you learn a lot from it. No one will like take take you and say, oh, you have a potential. There is no such thing. People want, if they pay money, they want to be sure that they get outcome that they want. Obviously. That's it. This is the, this is the difference, but like this is the main issue with the professional photography. If mm. they take you, they take you because of what you did before not because maybe your potential of doing something in the future. Oh, for sure. I mean, they are banking on the idea that maybe you can bring it, what their idea, their design to life in your own style. They don't want you to recreate an image you've done before necessarily, but yeah, they- Yeah, but they keep, they, keep, they keep your style, they keep your exactly. language, they keep you what like, they, they, they drawn to your language, to your style, what you did before anyway. Yeah, to, to basically draw inspiration from your portfolio, or kind of estimate what you would do based on the stuff you've done before, which is yeah. absolutely right. Um, but when you, let's take a step back. When you talk about clients or the kind of work yeah. that you do, um, first of all, when you, now when you start to turn pro or you want to turn it into occupation, do you have a certain genre of photography in mind or are you like, you know, whatever comes, I'll, I'll roll with it and figure it out as I go? Uh, I, like, you, as you said, I'm into portrait photography. I'm very into cinematography photography, kind of. Uh, I enjoy, like, I'm really, put much effort on my photography to be kind of um, a scene, not to be just a portrait or just a passport photo, photo, just to be a scene. Yeah, turn so, it from a mugshot yeah. to an art shot, yeah. yeah. So um, basically I'm targeting fashion photography, portrait photography, um, this kind of stuff, um, t storytelling also, um, able to, yeah, kind of to take in a concept, to, to work with a client, to, like I've I've done photo shoot for a clothes clothing brand. Um, Just a few so days ago, or a few weeks ago. I yeah, think, a few right? weeks ago, and fresh off the oven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do, I work with the client through the process. They like my style. They um, I have, we have a meeting and we walk through the process. What we want to do they, with my style and with their brand story. So it kind of combinations. Um, We'll see what, what where it will take me. I have no idea, but the main it's like storytelling, uh, portrait, fashion, and stuff. Yeah. Well, that's actually cool because since we scheduled this podcast, you actually start working already. So maybe there'll be actually something that would be very interesting. So you've actually done your first, let's call it official assignment, because you've done other works, I guess, beforehand. Yeah. But I think since you took your decision of I want to become a professional photographer, you actually got your first client already. Can you tell us a little bit about the stuff you've learned that? Maybe you learned about how the business work or what was the difference between, you know, doing it as, as a side thing or actually doing it when you uh, have in your mind, I want to become a professional. Okay, so what the, the day I've decided to be a professional photographer, so what is the main change is the approach to photography. It's, it's, a, it's a, my approach to my photography of what I'm doing. From the beginning, I start to talk to the client till the end when I deliver my job. It's a huge difference when if you do it as amateur or if you do it as a professional. It's a whole new language, it's a whole um, new politics of how you do stuff and how you manage your stuff. And even like... Can you give us some sort of examples from um, like what you thought before, what happened on the ground and stuff like that? I, I didn't think too much before. I didn't like imagine myself doing something. I just try and started to do it and I felt that I need to discuss this, I need to discuss exactly what my client wants. I need to see it and to go through whole photo shoot, to go to locations, to decide. Like, like you, you put much more effort in details and you want to make sure from the first day of w w you working with someone till the day you deliver the photo shoot, that's the same language, that's, that it's um, exactly what the client wants. You keep, you talk with, like it's very important as I see that, to understand what your client wa wants. Because from now, it's not about you. It's like when you amateur, it's all about you. It's about you having fun, it's about you taking out the beautiful photo that you think that you think that they're beautiful. And once you start to be a professional, it's not about you anymore. Yeah, you have it's to kind about, of... It's about your client. And you have to keep this in your mind all, all the way through. It's like having another person on the photo shoot with you, right? Because when you do your own thing, you're slightly more spontaneous. You kind of go to the level of this is what I think is the best thing to do and you kind of stick to it. But when you have a client, it sounds like you have basically somebody watching over you. 
and you have to make them happy on top of making yourself happy and that's quite the 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 struggle in a way because it's, it's, it's a different approach with people it's like it's photography it's a huge feel you can enjoy photography not not b- b- without becoming a f- professional right yeah. so you don't have to be earn money out of it to do competitions to work with people or even to, to charge money like small amount of money from someone you don't have to be a professional photographer but once you are it's a whole new like level it's different approach to everything and also also to be honest i think one of the biggest weights because when i first started photography i actually did commercial photography i did uh really like types of photo shoots and pr photography which i didn't really enjoy but it taught me a lot about treating photography as a business and one of the biggest differences is i think based on what you're saying is that when you do it for fun right where you do a photography for yourself or you're doing like this one-time thing you know i have a friend i'll do a gig for him i earn some money on the side no biggie when you actually made the decision, you know, photography is my business from now on, when you work with a client, you also have on your shoulders the weight of, will he work with me again? Yeah. Will he recommend me to other businesses? Because, you know, if you don't like the client and you're doing it for fun, you can be like, okay, let's just get it over with yeah, and be done with whatever. it. Yeah, whatever, I'll do something that I don't really yeah. care if they like. And if it's actually your job, you're thinking about both, okay, I need to have a high enough product, a good enough product so people will see it and maybe hire me for other stuff, but also you wanna keep good relations with your um, uh, client because if you have, if your client had a bad experience working with you, he will not recommend no. your, his friends to work no. with you. And it's a, big, it's a big risk in a sense, right? You have to kind of be a politician as well as a photographer. Everything, yes. You have like, y- you know, uh, business. This was you like you're not a f- like photographer. You're a business. It's, that's, it's, you are doing a photography. It's like your choice. It's okay, but you're a business now. So everything you do represents you as a business. Your website, uh, the way you talk to the clients, the way you talk to the models, everything you do represents you as a business with a bigger so, weight as well. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And also one of the things, and we kind of talked about it before, and I think um, it's kind of taking us towards where I want us to go is. A mixture of two things. So first of all, one of the things about you that I really like about your work is that your work has a very distinct style. Most photographers, they kind of do the kind of photographs they saw work for other people and then they find their way through them. What I think I think for you is the other way around. You kind of find your style first and then you're using it now for your portraiture, whether that be work or portfolio or personal projects. And another thing I really like about you, and we are starting to talk about now where as a professional photographer, you have to be both a business person, you also have to do your own stuff, you have to take risks, and you have to do a bunch of things that have nothing to do with photography. You are really kind of testing yourself now. I mean, as you said before, you recently did your first movie. Yeah. Uh, where you actually, if I remember correctly, you flew to Seoul to do that Not film. to Seoul, to Taipei. To, to Taipei. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're talking about Taipei, different countries. Taiwan. Taipei, Taiwan. It's, it's, Taiwan. it's in Taiwan because people think that it's like in Thailand or something. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. My, my bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Taipei, I'm going to yeah. get so many hate comments on it's this. Okay, it's <laughs> but okay, it's all right. It's uh, but what I was trying to say, when we talked about doing your own projects, this is a big risk. I mean, you go there, I, I would assume you went there for other reasons as well, but doing your own movie in a different country, that was a thousands of dollars for an experiment. For yeah, actually it doing was something. crazy. Yeah, I was. I was. Um, it was crazy. Like because I just like two years ago, I so saw I met a Taiwanese guy here in the airport. He was going back from Israel to Taiwan. I met him. We started to talk, and he was um, uh, he was studying directing in a film school in back there in Taipei. And years pass passed, and. I go like I decided that I want to go to Taipei and decided I want to do something with my time over there. I want to film something. So I talked to him and that's that's how it started. We talked to him. We find we found um, an actor. We decided for the um, script and we just did it. So there was it sounds like an actual movie production. So you had a director, you had an actor, you were the DOP, director of photography. Yeah. And, and and that was the first time you did a movie, wasn't yes. it? Yes, it's the first time I ever like, like pushed like the, the recording button on the camera. It was like you found out where it was. Yeah, I found where like I I'm happy it's, it's it came out in focus. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah you met. But you know, I think that the, the jump of actually trying something like this is, is very important, right? You you're just pushing the envelope, trying stuff you haven't done before, and kind of learning your way around it. Yeah. How was it for you that experience of? Doing it was do- surreal. Movie. It was surreal for me because I remember myself like years ago. I was w- always interested in, in video and filmmaking, but I've never really s- did something with that. It was always like like nice image in my head, nice dream that I've never really did something. 
And I decided that it's time, that like it's enough for waiting and I need to do something, whatever it is, whatever it will be outcome, I don't care. I just need to do that from beginning till the end. And once you, I think the, the biggest struggle is to overcome this step when you start, when you think about th- something, when you actually starting to do that. Saying, all right, I want to make a movie. And then I think the hardest step is the first step. Yeah. Right. You can make it as small as you can. Just do it and then slowly you'll rumble your way into actually Yeah, I think the, the first step is the, the hardest one. But once you've got people, once you start into that, there is no way around. You have to finish because mm-hmm. especially if you're not alone, especially when you have like a team, people, you cannot say like, oh, no, no, maybe not. Like yeah, I don't feel like that today. You have to do that. You have like responsibility with these people that they are for you over there. So you have to do that. Yeah, it's funny. I, th- I think that's one of the best ways to kind of get your ass out there because so I, I've been teaching for a while um, people in, in workshops how to do uh, their own photography projects, right? How to get yeah. a documentary. And some of them are semi-professionals who are doing the same process you're going through. And some of them, you know, they're hobbyists, they like doing photography and they kind of want to push their boundaries a little bit further. Yeah. And I was sitting with a good friend uh, who was one of my students a while ago and we're kind of talking about what else can he do? What's his next step? And we're talking about the different options, the same as you, I guess, when you were considering, should I do a movie, should I do a project, should I do a photo shoot, should I do a fashion thing or a documentary thing? And we're talking about a bunch of things he wanted to do. And then one of the problems I immediately recognize is that while he has a lot of ideas he wants to do, he'll never end up doing it because they always will stay in idea form, yeah. right? He doesn't commit. And I think what you're saying now is is a perfect way to kind of approach it. A lot of times, if you want to do something, the first step is the hardest. So you need to force yourself yeah, it's true. to do that. You can do it by, like you did, just right, set a date and do a movie and then you have to do everything else. Or you can just do it by simply purchasing, let's say, a flight ticket, right? So you can buy a cheap low-cost flight ticket to anywhere for, I don't know, a week. And then yeah. you have to go, right? Because you won't let those $200 pass away. And then you can start forcing yourself to actually do something. And it's a really good way to go about it. And I think one of the things that... You, cause it's amazing because you're basically just on your path, but you seem to be very well-rounded about what you need to do. I mean, you have a lot of the very important key elements of you know taking the first step, doing your own projects just to kind of get your portfolio going and people to know your name and see what you can do. And also take the risk, you know, willingly knowing that, you know, it might be tricky to pay rent for the next few months. It might be tricky to, I don't know, eat out. To or, feed my dogs. Or feed your dogs, which is more dogs, important than yeah. rent. Let's, put, let, <laughs> yeah. let's be clear on that. How did you get to that point? Did you have anybody guiding you through it or prepare you for the freelance world or yeah. were you just uh, got it naturally? I just was born this way. Born yeah, to be a freelancer. Yeah, I was yeah. just born this way. Tough Russian woman, no. <laughs> um, I don't know really. Like again, when s- one another good advice for people who are into photography, if even like they're considering to be a professional, get around photographers. Get get like make yourself surrounded by photographers. Find people, f- friends, whatever that it needed for you to kind of see this world. You will see it outside. You will never feel it on your like on yourself till you got into it. But you will see how people. Well, they do. Impulse, Get a uh, point of reference for it. Yeah. I agree. I have a good friend who is a photographer, and he's, he's a movie director, actually. Um, and one of his, I think when he said it to me, it sounded so easy, but actually, when I first started, it felt like something I should never do. And he, he just said, like, you know, if you're starting off, if you're a photographer, it doesn't matter if you're a hotshot movie director, super famous fashion photographer, or somebody who's just picking up a camera and starting off, ask for help. I mean... It's true. People think that, you know, photographers will keep their secrets to themselves or artists don't share or it's like a, a dog eat dog kind of world. People love to share. People love yeah. to teach. Not all of them, but the people like, for you, like a friend, I have friends, a photographer that are always like happy to help me if I have some questions or whatever it is. You can always ask for help. So m- some people would be like, you know, no, we can't do it right now. We can't help you right now. But a lot of photographers, they know the struggle. I know the struggle when I first started. I wish I had somebody to talk to. I wish I had somebody to ask, you know, what kind of projects should I do? Or will this topic would be interesting? Or how to actually build up a project? And I think that's exactly what you're saying, where you should surround yourself, first of all, with the company of people that you can get their advices, 
right? Or at least hear the like general talk, like what kind of stuff professional photographers yeah. talk about between themselves. Or you can also straightforward ask, you know, I want to do this and this. Is that a good idea? Or what would you recommend? I think one of the biggest mistakes that people who start photography and they want to get advice from a photographer, they kind of go like out of nowhere. You, they don't know the person. They don't know who he is. And I got a bunch of these like Facebook messages. Somebody I've never talked to before. Go like, hello, how to make money from photography? Please answer. And, and like, I don't know you. I don't know what you're talking about. This is a super general question. Sell, I don't know sell, how to your, camera. sell your camera. Sell your camera. You'll sell your camera. You'll make money camera. instantly. Yeah, instantly. Uh, it's not the best way. But yeah, but if you build a relationship with somebody, you won't believe how many photographers would be willing to give you an advice, sit down for coffee with you and kind of help you out through some of your struggles or even become full on mentors for you. I have my own mentors in photography and I highly appreciate each and every one of them. Uh, like Mitchell Kanishkevich, for example, who really helped me out getting into the kind of photography I like to do today, kind of boost my confidence up. Uh, Shlomi Nisim, who is a great inspiration for me and a good friend. So if you just ask for help, people will help you out. And I think it's a really beautiful thing that we have right now in the, art, in the world of artists, creators, and especially photographers. Don't be afraid to ask a, a question. Just know what kind of question you want to ask. Yeah, know? it's true. This, this is very important. Like the way you ask the question, just don't like, uh, what lens do you use? It doesn't help. Like, yeah, it won't help you, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, like, think about, like, think about the bigger questions. Well, I think it's, like, the main uh, issue with when you have, like, actually someone to talk to, so use it wisely. Don't waste it on lo- what, what lens do you use or what camera do you use because it's not what will make you professional photographer, that not what will make your business grow or something like that. Yeah, I think certain questions are... When you don't, when it's like occasionally, like suddenly you meet somebody who is in photography and you're unprepared for it, then you ask questions that really their answers won't help you. Like, so, what kind of u- camera do you so, use? What so, kinda... so tell me what is the good question. <laughs> what would be a good question to ask would be, I think, first of all, it's a mixture of two things. First of all, you need to figure out what is it that you want to do. Because asking a general question like... Do your homework. Well, kind of. But homework doesn't mean necessarily understand the business yeah. and then ask a super specific question of in what stock do I invest, right? I think it's more of a question of, all right, I want to become a photographer. That's my goal. What kind of photography am I into? Because asking a professional photographer, how do I become a professional photographer? That's the most general question you can ever ask. And it won't really help you because becoming a professional fashion photographer is a whole different course than becoming a documentary or even becoming a wedding photographer. So I think you need to understand where is it that you want to get to. The clearer your vision of your end goal, the better the questions you can ask. And I think general questions to ask would be, okay, I have this project in mind. Do you think it would actually be relevant for a magazine or should I aim it more towards a gallery? Or things like, okay, I want to build my own website. Is there anything important I need to think about when I build my own website? Things like that, thing of that sort would be a lot more helpful for you. And professional photographers would actually be more interesting to help you because those are very... Not easy answers to uh, easy questions to answer, but it's a lot more possible for them to help you, right? If you ask me what kind of stuff I need to have on my website, I can ask you, okay, what kind of photography do you do? And then I have some a rough idea of like, oh, make sure you have a gallery, or for example, if you do documentary photography, make sure you have a blog, yeah. right? Because that's your business. If you're, a f- I don't know if you're a fashion photographer, how much of a blog you need, but if you're a documentary photographer and you don't have a blog on your website, you're out of the equation. Nobody cares for your portfolio. People care for your blog. Right, so I think that's the kind of questions you should have prepared for you when you have the opportunity, whether that be doing a lecture or a workshop. Yeah. Well, I think that this topic is extremely important. And when we talked about this, um, I think one of the biggest struggles you have to go through right now is pushing through it. Do you have any kind of plans of what is the next few steps you have to do? Do you have it like ready for you? Like, first, I want to do this project or create this website or buy this gear or have this contact? Is that kind of Yeah, I you? definitely try to make up something. <laughs> um, I think like in the beginning, especially, you have to do like, no one will tell you what to do. You will have no clients. No one will have your project. You have to push um, yourself. You have to like create your own issues, like your own, your own stuff. Um, and the first step that I decided for myself that I need to do, that I have to establish myself visually. What I mean by that, I mean a decent website, I mean a decent kind of um, agenda of what I want to do, like what I'm looking for or why people should hire me. Kind of kind of something that a steady um, profile, I call this, you can call it like yeah. this, it's something that if I go and speak to someone behind me, I have 
very clear agenda. I have very clear website of what I do, and that will like help me because um, it's people, especially they want to see stuff. They like, especially in photography, people don't talk to you much. They will like show me the website. That's like the first question that you have. Do you have a website? Yeah, do you have something to see? Yeah, yeah you have something to show me. Mm-hmm. That's like this is the something that it's like good basis for for starting. And I, and I think it's actually really, how do I say it? It always sounds better to a client. Check out my website or here's my website. Then, you know, go check my Facebook page. Or album. Instagram, yeah. Yeah, I have an album called Vietnam 2016. On, on Flickr, yeah. Yeah, check my Flickr. What was it? There's <laughs> another one, a 500px or something. Yeah. That's... When you have your own website, even though for a lot of ways, it's a waste of money because, you know, it's only for the business. It Many times it can be a 100% difference whether or not you get a client. You know, once you have a website, it's kind of a status symbol, right? You have your own website. A client would think of you much better if you have a professional platform showing your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, something that I didn't understand like years before, but I still didn't um, consider myself as a photographer, professional one. Something that I didn't appreciate much is a website. Like, oh, website, who even goes there? Like, well, who used websites anyway? You have an Instagram, you see the photo, you like it or not. So no, the answer is no. People always end up on your website if you have one. So it's it's like your opportunity to show yourself because you, you're free to create whatever you want because on Instagram or Facebook, it's very, um, they decide for you how, how to post your photos, how, when, like what format, wh- how yeah. many and stuff. They decide the format of, for, for your work. But, but most of the time you should have something more to say than just Instagram feed. So the website is your ability to show more, to sell yourself. You can like do whatever you want. There is no, no restriction, no restriction, no rules. You do whatever you want. I think also it's good for, for the person, uh, to kind of get everything around for, for myself. Like when I build website, this is the process that I, when I decide for myself, what it's important for me, it's kind of make me to do decisions, like to make decisions. Yeah. And also I I think exactly you said a lot of time, the way you design your website is more personal. Yeah. So you can actually use your, whether that be the design, the layout of your website, of kind of who you are, what kind of photos you want people to see. But I think also websites a lot of time offer you um, a a more vast range of things to offer. Yeah. Right. Because if somebody checks your Instagram, you can see your photos, but you can also see your mom commenting, oh, what a lovely photo. Right. (laughs) It doesn't look very professional. But also, for example, somebody like you who does photos and videos, you can have a way better way to kind of show how they work together on a website than you would on ever have on Instagram. Yeah, and stuff like I, that. I was underestimating the, the website ability. For sure. And it's, and it's not like website. It's a great platform for you to define yourself, first of all, for you to decide, because once you have to decide something, right, once you have to decide what you put and when you like, how do you do that? It's it's kind of forms who you are for outside world. So mm-hmm. people have a better idea. Uh, what they are dealing with and not who just dealing yeah with as well yeah i mean I, I wish you all the best in the world i mean going into becoming a freelance or a freelancer in any occupation there would that be photography uh, real estate or even a, a lawyer that's a scary move it's a scary move because there's a lot of uncertainty uh you don't know what's going to happen and you kind of have to reinvent yourself and based on our sh- very short conversation right now uh, i kind of see that you have a lot of the obstacles that people have ahead of them behind you. You kind of figured out the fact that you are going to be willing to fail and you are willing to try things out and you kind of have the idea of doing your own thing and slowly building uh, yourself, but would that be a client pool or yourself as a professional and kind of the products you're going to offer. So I do wish you all the best in the world. And it's been an absolute pleasure having you on this podcast. Is there anything else you want to say to people at home who might be considering doing the exact same thing that you're doing, maybe in a couple of months or a year time, or just toying with the idea in the, in the near future of turning their love and passion for photography into a profession? Is there anything you want to kind of say to them, share with them? I think, as I said before, you don't have to be a professional for enjoying photography. You can enjoy photography from so many levels without trying to make a living out of it. So if you want to make living out of it, uh, don't give up kind of t- if, if you decide to do it. So to do it till the end, take like everything you can, whatever it takes and don't care about the result. 
too much like more care about the process enjoy the process i think that that's why people do photography because they, get, they enjoy the process they're not uh, like they don't have any goal to get a pulitzer or something that's not how it works it's more about the process itself understanding it's all organic i mean one project you do you might not be super happy with its results but that's exactly the platform from which you continue to your next work and your next work yeah. and then slowly build yourself as a professional well, Valerie, I wish you all the best. Uh, people at home who are checking out this podcast, I highly recommend for you guys to check Valerie's fa uh, Facebook, Instagram, website. All the links are going to be in the blog post below. And again, Val, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for it's having been an absolutely me. Absolutely awesome you. conversation. And I think this would be a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Yay.